Hey guys, this is Sam, and today I'll be showing you what's on my Mac. I don't know about you guys, but I always find it super interesting to see like what YouTubers I watch and what applications they use on a daily basis on their computer or more specifically on their Macs. So I thought some of you guys might be interested in what I use, so we're going to kick it off not talking about the default apps on my computer, but the third party apps I use. First one I want to talk about is Deliveries. This is just a package tracker application. Pretty simple, gives me push notifications if one of my packages ships or it arrives at my front door. So very nice application there. I can't open it up because it'll kind of show my location, but it's a very good app overall. And I'll put a screenshot on screen, put a screenshot up on screen if you're interested in seeing what it looks like. Next up is Clear, which is a reminders application. And the reason I use it over the stock reminders application is really for the interface and just some of the cool sounds. Like if you complete an item, listen to this. It just sounds really cool, and I know that's extremely simple. But it's also very cool because it organizes these things in order, or the reminders in order based on importance. So like, most important would be to visit somebody in your family, less important, the yellow would be like, just play video games. You can organize it however you want, you can rearrange them just like this by dragging and dropping. This also has an iPhone or iPad or iPod Touch application, so it syncs with that and works extremely well. So that's very nice. I also like it because you can get reminders at specific times for specific events or reminders. And I like the layout from most important to least important. That is clear, pretty simple application, but I haven't used it as much as I wanted to lately. Very good application still. Now this third app, TweetBot, I could talk about for a long time. And if there's one application that we'll be talking about today that I use the most, it has to be TweetBot. I use this application constantly. And a lot of people have no idea why you would ever pay money for a Twitter client. This one is relatively pricey. It's around, I think, $19.99 normally, or might be on sale for $9.99. My favorite thing about this, and you can, you can swipe up and it'll stream. So it's like always pulling in new tweets, which is super cool. I love being able to do that. It just is always pulling in new tweets. I don't have to constantly pull to refresh, pull to refresh, Pull to refresh, which I hate doing on the normal Twitter app. I also just like the overall interface. I can click on my profile and click on my profile picture. I don't know. I just think it looks very nice. You can swipe down, view media, view tweets, tweet from it. I think the tweets look actually very nice. I mean, I think that just the compose view looks very cool. Works a lot better for me than the stock Twitter app on the Mac. And I'm a huge fan of Tweetbot overall. I think I've been using TweetBot on my Mac for over a year, over two years now. I use it every day, and like I said, it's one of those applications that is a must-have for me. Now, I just jumped on the 1Password train recently because I didn't really get the point of it at first, but I can't really open it up because it'll show you my personal password, which would be kind of bad, I hear. But it basically just stores your passwords and usernames and logins and IDs. In a list view, you can copy and paste them, them from here. It's kind of the all-in-one password keeper. You can use it in Safari. There's an extension, I believe, right up here that will allow you to view your passwords and stuff, which is very, very nice. It also works, once again, with an iPhone and iPad app, so you can sync it across all your devices. A lot of continuity between many of the apps I use on my Mac and my iPhone and my iPad, which I love. It's relatively expensive. I think it's like $49.99 normally. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think it's worth that. I got it when it was on sale for $34.99 and I still struggle to see the value in that. But if you do want a very nice looking, very well maintained, super quick and speedy password password manager, uh, one password is gonna be the way to go. It's my favorite and maybe even only password manager I've ever used, but it's a very good application overall. Up next is gonna be the three Apple designed applications of like Microsoft Word, which is Pages, Microsoft Excel, which is Numbers, and Microsoft PowerPoint, which is gonna be Keynote on Apple side. I can't say a whole lot about these other than they're very good applications. I use them all the time for school and just general daily tasks. They work very well. Once again, they work with iPhone and iPad and they're amazing. You get them, I think, for free with all new apps or with all new Macs purchased. I think after like 2014 sometime. So if you buy a new Mac, you're going to get these for free. Super good applications, and I'm very impressed with them overall. Pixelmator is another application similar to TweetBot. 
that I use on almost a daily basis. If you've ever looked at the cover for any of my YouTube videos, including this one, it was made with Pixelmator. And let me show you what I'm talking about very, very quickly. If I go under documents, go to YouTube thumbnails, this one I put together is what I had to do was just drag a screenshot in from the background, go ahead and lay a black background and kind of fade out the opacity like this and then put a number over it. You can do all kinds of things. You can add text just like this. And I know what I'm doing looks terrible, but this is just a quick example. If you want an, an incredibly easy to use, super fast and a very well made image editing application, Pixelmator is the way to go. The iPhone and iPad apps, once again, are awesome. Just the way this app works is amazing. I learned how to do it and I am not super like smart about image editing, but it's very easy to use. I think any of you would be able to use it just fine. And it is one of those applications, once again, that I could not live without on my Mac. It is just a fantastic application. I could, there's not enough good things to say about it. It's just, I could go on for hours and hours. Now, Sketch is another image editing application that I use on my Mac, so-and-so. I mean, not super often, but I do use it occasionally. This is if I'm kind of wanting to step up my graphic design game, and I'm not a graphic designer by any means. I don't want to come off sounding like that, because I'm actually quite the opposite of a graphic designer. I just mess around. But if I want to do something slightly more complicated, let me show you really quickly. Uh, let's click on iOS update template. I made this for my like update videos. Whenever I want to talk about a change log, I'll copy and paste it, throw it in here just like that, type some text, and it works very well. Uh, I'm very happy with Sketch overall. It's one of these applications. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I'm in the camp that if I need to do something a little bit more complicated, I'll use this over Pixelmator. This one I think is around a hundred something dollars if you want to buy it. So quite a bit more expensive than I think 30 for Pixelmator. But if I had to choose, if I could only pick one between Pixelmator and Sketch, I would go Pixelmator all the way. I have far fewer problems with Pixelmator than I've ever had with Sketch. Not that I have a lot of problems with Sketch. It's just that Pixelmator works really well. Mailbox is just a third party email client. It hasn't been updated as frequently as I think it should have been. There's been kind of radio silence on both the Mac app, which is still in beta for Granit, so I'm not saying it has to be perfect or anything, but even for the iPhone and iPad apps for Mailbox, nobody's really said anything about it. There hasn't been an update for this one in weeks, I think, for the beta. There hasn't been an update in months on the iPhone and iPad versions, so it was my favorite email client, but I'm quickly starting to lose favor with it, which is kind of disappointing. It was my one of my most used applications at one point. Now it just kind of sits there a lot, which is disappointing. Another must-have application that I use on my Mac constantly, and what I'm using to record the voiceover for this video is GarageBand. I have recorded every single audio for all of my videos, I'm not even kidding, since my first video to current or present with GarageBand. A lot of people argue that it doesn't have enough customization features or enough, quote, power user features. But honestly, for all I need to do, which is plugging a microphone in and hitting the record button, GarageBand is perfect and it does far and beyond what I would ever need it to do. I even made the intro for my YouTube videos that you even saw in the beginning of this one in GarageBand, just throwing some simple loops together. It's a fun application to mess around with and I love it as well. One of those must have applications that I could not live without here on my Mac. Sonos just allows me to control my wireless hi-fi speakers throughout my house. I've talked about Sonos a little bit in the past. It just, they're these really high quality, great sounding wireless speakers. This is just an application to play music through those speakers. Following Sonos, we head back to Launchpad to see a list of applications. We have Final Cut Pro. For some reason, and I don't know how I did it, I edited, I think, almost every video on my YouTube channel up until a few months ago with Final or with iMovie actually right here. But one day I just kind of started messing around with Final Cut. I tried out the trial and I just really enjoy Final Cut. A lot of people hate it. It's similar to Sketch. People despise it. They cannot stand it. For me, I edit. I think once again, I think like all my videos for the past four, five, maybe even six or seven months now. I can't remember exactly when I started using it. It might have been even been at the beginning of 2015. I honestly can't remember, guys. I'm sorry. 
but it's a great application, much more complex than iMovie if you want to do video editing. I would recommend starting out in iMovie because this is a whole lot easier to use than I would think Final Cut will ever be. Not that Final Cut is not easy to use, that's a benefit, it's just much more complex, I'll put it that way. Very good application overall though.